These three interior designers have been given a photograph of an empty backyard. They have free reign to design it in any way they please. My name is Sasha Bykoff, and my design style is worldly, fun, and glamorous. My name is Becky Carter, and my work is nouveau retro and highly textural. My name is Courtney McLeod, and my design style is kaleidoscopic, playful, and confident. No clients, no restrictions, just blank space. Looking at the original space, I am seeing a horror. Okay. No, I'm not kidding. It looks like a bit of a handyman special in terms of the construction of very simplistic railing and stairs. I think it needs personality more than anything. I want to give this house a real 70s modernist European flair to it. Because I want to go for this very clean and crisp modernist look, I'm going to go with a white stucco facade. This feels like it might be a New York based, maybe it's a West Village brownstone, but I think we have a little bit of a classic architecture here that we might be able to work with. That's why I decided to go with doing a glazed brick cladding on the entire backside of the house. We're going with this really beautiful tonal color, sort of calls in the natural colors from the surrounding gardens. I would love to do an off-white stucco with a little bit of a modern Italianate style to create a bit of a neutral background for the fun that I'm hoping to do in this space. When I'm looking at the windows and the doors on this house, there seems to be no consistency anywhere here. So I am going to completely overhaul all of the windows and doors, and I'm going to create a system that is bifolding. So these doors are gonna be in panels. They'll sort of fold into one another. So it's a combination of a teak wood frame with very subtle little bronze trim on it. And that's going to capture the glass in this oval shape. And the shape of the doors was inspired by brutalist architecture. The first thing that I want to do is to bring a bit of order to this chaos. And I also want to really open up the house. So I enlarged all of the original windows. And I love the idea of putting in steel framed windows, but but instead of black, why not go for a really bold color? And so one of my favorite colors is taxicab yellow. It's really important for me to create a light filled space from the inside and also to have this like indoor outdoor entertaining feeling. So what I'm gonna do is actually blast out all these windows and doors and create sliding doors through a pocket. The doors that I'm gonna go for are gonna be bronze. And and they're gonna disappear within this stucco facade because I wanna keep everything really modernist and crisp. So the original design has a large stair and a deck that goes the full width of the house. What I would like to do is remove a bit of that second floor deck. I also want to do a similar thing that I did with the windows. Here, it's a really bold, Barbie, bubblegum, bright, hot pink. <laughs> and I really love yellow and pink together. I think you can't help but smile. I am going to run the deck across the entire span of the back of the house and the the deck flooring is going to be made out of this amazing material that is solid glass brick. These are not like those hollow shower glass blocks of yester yore. And that's going to let the light cascade down and it's going to help to bring so much more brightness and airiness to the underside of the balcony. I would love to commission a custom piece that would really camouflage the post and create an outdoor sculpture for the space. I really love to take things that are required and functional and necessary and turning them into something really playful and provocative. I'm actually going to blast out this railing and I'm going to create a full stucco railing. So I'm going to really box out the space. I think the boxing out of the railing is going to add a lot to the architecture of the space because it's going to make it feel really strong 
strong and very clean. The deck flooring I'm gonna use is by Clay Tile. We have this kind of like terracotta marbleized pattern and then we have this simple, more cream colored and this is going to really blend in really well with our stucco. I'm gonna clad the ceilings of the deck in a bamboo ceiling detail. In the original space, I really don't like how much real estate the stair takes up. So I think it's okay for us to turn it into a spiral stair that will free up a lot of much needed real estate and it will add something curvaceous and sculptural to the space. I love spiral stairs. And because the spiral staircase is such an architectural feature, I wanted that to really stand out. And that's why we have a very simple railing, which is just the step and the spiral staircase kind of just moves into that simple stucco railing. I decided to take away the exterior staircase altogether and put the interior staircase very close to our balcony system and our doors. And that way you still have the same functionality. The staircase is the same distance away, but you get to reclaim that space in your backyard. And that's gonna be your main thoroughfare for getting up onto the top balcony or coming back down to the garden. For these dividing walls, I really wanted them to blend in perfectly with the architecture. We're not trying to get fancy here. Our main focus is that staircase. I'm thinking that it may be kind of fun and playful to actually have two different materials on either side. So we're throwing convention out the window and we're gonna be doing one side that is the same as the back of the building. It's our glazed brick. The other side is a teak and so it's going to be the same as our decking material. It sort of wraps up the side and kind of gives this really nice sweeping feeling to the wood through the space. I would love to have the fence tie in a bit more to the materiality of the home itself. And so also I would like to add in a bit more privacy as well. So I'm introducing fencing that will be in a similar stucco material. So when I think about the coolest backyard spaces, the two things that come to mind is a sculpture garden. And the other cool thing that you can do in the backyard is have some water to swim in. So I'm going with a really spectacular tile lining that is my own custom design. This tile would be lining the pool. It would also be lining the sides so that when you look down into that water, you're just gonna see this kind of moving undulation of this floral pattern working its magic under the water. So the original picture showed a full grass backyard. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of a little patch of grass like that. And I really love the idea of bringing in a trotso. And trotso is basically marble pieces, stone pieces that have been randomly chopped up and they are placed into a composite material. And using very large three foot by three foot pavers really helps to create a sense of expansiveness to the floor. Another really important element that I had to have here was a water feature. I love a water feature. It brings a sense of zen and calm. So I decided to add in a reflection pool. So I'm gonna take these tiles that I use on the patio and I'm gonna use them in the reflection pool as well. So I'm gonna be putting these kind of pedestals throughout the pool that sort of peppered through the water and they're going to behave as both pedestals for the art and they'll also kind of behave as a little lily pad to be able to traverse this pool. I want something that just it feels a little like it has movement, like it has personality, like it's, hmm, that's a little weird. So I know that I want to bring in a water feature. So I would like to introduce a freeform fountain. I am planning to use a really bright orange on the outside. And then I wanna really make the water in the fountain feel very blue. And so I'm going to use a wonderful blue tile to line the inside of the fountain. The Fountain is inspired by a 60s French artist, Gilbert Portrainer. It's a wall made out of tiles with sculptural buckets and troughs that allow water to cascade naturally, kind of pouring from one bucket and cup to the next. 
for my furniture, I'm gonna go French Provencal reclaimed wood dining table. I wanna add in some warmth with all these like hard surfaces. And I'm gonna go for some vintage Charlotte Perrion rush dining chairs. Up on the deck, I'd like to include a really lovely big dining set. And what I'm giving them is a set by Paolo Castelli. And I'm giving a very simple cream outdoor fabric from Elitis on those chairs. I'm keeping it cream because we already have a lot of colors. We've got a lot of art. I want this to be really neutral. I also imagine that they might not have kids here. For me, any outdoor space isn't complete without a wonderful dining area. And the table that I am using is a glass table, but it isn't just plain. It's actually a bit of an iridescent ombre finish to it. So these couches are Paolo Lenti, one of my favorite Italian designers. They're contemporary. I wanted it to feel really low, really modular, so you're kind of like almost at the same level as the reflection pool. So for the loungers by the pool, I'm going with something that's a very simple monolithic form. I've designed these to feel like one singular cushion, but the design is meant to engage with the steps of my stadium style decking. And that means that you can kind of move them up or down a rung depending on where the shadow is during the time of day. An amazing designer called Chris Woolston does a series of amazing, fantastical furniture in rattan. And they're basically people chairs. I have put in a Jean-Marie Fiori chair and table. And so the chair itself has this very, very sweet kind of lion face with little lion paw feet. And then our table is a cast bronze table that has a monkey at the very bottom and its tail is holding on to the table itself. In between our amazing chairs, I'm going to bring in a table that complements the dining table towards the rear of the space. And it is really a, an iridescent glass. And so you've got this really subtle hint of color as the sun hits it. I really would love to bring in a little bit more whimsy into the space. And I found an inexpensive vintage metal settee. I chose a bunch of different staggered shaped lights that are also by Palo Lenti. And I just like this idea of having this like long table and being able to play with the different shapes and different heights of these lights. I've decided to go ahead and put in Nader Gamas sconces. And Nader Gamas is an artist who's working with this kind of bronze boxy quality. You're gonna see those above the deck. They're gonna be up on on the upper level. And then we also have the sconces on either side of our fountain. During the daytime, they'll still look like sculpture. They don't look like lighting that isn't being used. At the back of the house, I think it would be a great idea to incorporate a bit of light to highlight our new wonderful back facade. I'm using a couple of fixtures from the bubbly collection from Rosie Lee. I thought her iridescent bubbly fixture felt so right with the rest of the space and it adds to our whole down the rabbit hole vibe. I think that the best way to dress up these fences is definitely through adding some natural life. So I decided to do a trellis of white roses. Not only will this be really fragrant, but it's also just really pretty and it adds this element of femininity, it adds a softness. I'm gonna be leaning towards some grasses and natural flowers. And when I think about the heights, I'd love for them to be sort of warm and soften the edges of the space. So they're gonna have a lot of movement and a lot of volume. I have incorporated some spectacular color and pattern. I think it's a bit unexpected to have such a bold mural in an outdoor space, but why not? And within that, I decided to incorporate topiaries. And it feels just a perfect counterpoint to 
the sort of craziness within the space. The sculptures that I've chosen are a number of sculptures by an artist named John Koga and another artist named Abigail Ozora Simpson. I'm picking out some of these sculptures to kind of feel like they are maybe your little pet. Maybe instead of having a dog running around in the backyard, you have your John Koga sculpture. In my backyard, it's always spring. <laughs> So, of course, I had to incorporate a bit of hanging vines. And then also we have a wonderful blooming cherry blossom tree in the neighbor's yard. I encouraged them to do that so that it would fit with my scheme. This feels New York to me. It feels cosmopolitan. It feels super chic. But at the same time, there is an homage to European Mediterranean architecture. My backyard, I feel like it could be like kind of the 4th of July every day. You can hang out there all day. It's just about lounging. It's about really relaxing. This is my backyard in my dreams. And I just, I love how fun and happy it is. And it's okay to be joyful in design. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. We got some different things in here. Really. Yours is so, so serene. Yeah. Thank you. So like, chic. I feel like I would want to decompress here after a spa day. Yeah. And like sit outside drinking lemon and cucumber mm -hmm. water in my bathroom and yeah. be like in a full state of sex. <laughs> I'm definitely getting some Amalfi vibes. Amalfi, like, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Oh. What is this like art piece like? Yeah, my thought was the two best things you can do in a garden is have a pool and or have a sculpture garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love I love it. how you did the arch doors. Yeah, it was inspired by Italian modernist, mm -hmm. post-brutalist style. Yeah. You have like a Royer kind of inspired Oh yeah, the railing. railing. Yeah, very Royer inspired for sure. <laughs> oh wow, Courtney. I wanted a little bit of like a playful Willy Wonka, but elegant yeah. <laughs> kind of vibe. And it's really, you know, a girly fantasy. So, I love yeah. the staircase. I yeah. love how you did that pop of pink. And, I and feel cohesive. like this could just be a hotel courtyard in yeah, Miami. Yeah, it's very hotel. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I see you have the Chris Wollston chairs. Yeah, I, lo I always I'm love those chairs. Which I'm obsessed with. I stand, love Chris. Right, absolutely obsessed. They're three different <laughs> Feelings, but I feel like I could like these are three times of the day or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I like start here for like afternoon cocktails, then go to the spa, mm -hmm. yeah. hang yeah. out at the spa, mm -hmm. and then yeah. once I've kind of recovered and recuperated, <laughs> it's party time. Party time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I love it. I love it.